All right. Welcome back, everyone. So we have another wonderful session that we are starting right away. And this session is being handled by two persons. So we have Michael Wolmer and Jordan Erasmus who will be taking this session. And what they will be talking about is Mautic preparing for enterprise. The good, the bad, the ugly. All right, so just a bit of introduction before I they come right on to start the session. So both Jordan and Michael came from the casino industry for many years. Jordan has run an operation of 27 casinos and Michael has previously run Caesars Casino. Three years ago, they founded Surge.media, which is an online marketing company focusing on automated marketing. Today, Surge supports over 50 clients, all running on Mautic. Some are self-managed, some are managed services. Clients ranges from B2G, B2B, B2C, and D2C. And across all different verticals from insurance through to online CBD business. Okay, all right. So um, welcome on stage. This time is Michael and Jordan. All right, so Michael, Jordan, you're welcome. Good evening, everybody. Good afternoon, morning, wherever you are in the world. Okay, all right, great. So um, you can go ahead to start sharing your presentation and then um, you can go on with, the, um, with your presentation this afternoon, this evening, or this evening here yeah, at the moment. <laughs> uh, thanks very much. Hello, Toby. All right, Jordan. All right, so basically, as uh, Oluwatawi kindly uh, introduced, uh, we come from quite a high volume uh, acquisition, conversion, retention uh, background um, in uh, primarily direct to customer uh, industries, um, as you mentioned, uh, casino or gaming. So very high volume, uh, quite a psychological product, and then going into immediate segmentation from the first touch point. Um, we've had experience building up our own softwares and um, have used the Mordic uh, platform to then go and launch our um, basically what you would consider as uh, consulting and then going on to really deep um, analysis, campaigning and uh, segmentation of users um in through all different verticals. Today we're lucky to say that we've um, touched on um, you know, B2G high risk industries doing mobile alarms and reminders to all the way through to, you know, the small mom and pop shops selling t-shirts um, and then right up to, again, big industry insurance companies. Um, again, really focusing on that first touch point and then going down into um, the retention activities and so on. Um, I think at this point, I'll let Mike take over and let's get straight into the presentation. Uh, uh, hello. Uh, hi, can everyone hear me now? Just give me a thumbs up. <coughs> yeah, certainly good. Let's go. Okay, great. <laughs> right. All right. Thanks, Jordan. So so today we're going to be speaking mainly about um, one of our, our uh, kind of medium to big size customers. It is um, uh, one of the largest delivery companies in Israel. Uh, the client approached us about eight, eight or nine months ago and requested help in migrating their current marketing automation system uh, to Mortic. Uh, and one of the great things, actually, and you know, uh, something to add to the community is this client actually found me via the Mo the Mortic forum, and it has turned out to be a highly, highly profitable client. Um, it's actually not the first client that we've picked up in the forum. Um, so, you know, besides the forum being an amazing place for support, it's also a great place to meet new customers and assist and move forward. Um, so today we'll be going into the efforts that it took into facilitating the company's marketing needs based on, on Mortic. So we've kind of broken down the presentation into the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, and I think as everybody over here 
agrees. Mortic is an amazing piece of software. It's got incredible capabilities. The fact that it is an open source software has allowed us to develop on top of the software itself and also to actually have a look under the hood when we uh, encounter different uh, obstacles on the way. <clears throat> um, the actual installation procedure of Mortic has been very, very simple. Um, you know, I'm sorry to say that I have yet to, to get Composer installation working properly myself. I've done a few different installations of it and, and I've been in the, in the Slack channel, um, but I'm definitely not a DevOps person. I'm more of a, uh, a techie marketing person, so it's not my forte. And eventually when we do have to move over, we'll get our DevOps to do that uh, as well. <clears throat> and the actual migration of data from other systems into Mortic itself is pretty seamless today. Um, the, the, there's the import crons and um, you know, the import of uh, um, files via the actual, uh, the actual user interface, which makes it really, really easy. <clears throat> so when we took on this client, the first thing was actually to, you know, to take care of the onboarding um, for the client. And initially we started looking at you know, which is the best environment to support the client. Um, the client has around probably 500,000 records in their database. They have a high, high volume website. They have a high volume uh, application where people are ordering food online all the time. <clears throat> and as such, we needed to actually do a little bit of research. Um, we did a lot of research uh, into which is the best systems to use. Um, I'm sure many of you know Yosu. So he's got some great articles out there on actually fixing up the right hardware that you need. Eventually, <clears throat> we decided to go with uh, Amazon AWS with 64 gig RAM uh, server and eight CPUs, and obviously a very, very big uh, hard drive. The actual installation process, as we all know, is really, really easy. Uh, importing 500,000 records into the database is also pretty easy. Um, unfortunately, <clears throat> because of the size of, of such the file, you do need to cut that file up. And in order to do that in the most effective way, we just wrote a few scripts that would actually um, cut the file into many, many different pieces and ran the Mortic import uh, console job, which did everything for us um, within, within a few hours, actually. So, you know, getting everything up and running was, uh, was pretty simple. The next, the next thing that we were faced with was the actual integrations. And as I said before, the client has a desktop application, an Android application, um, and I've written over here a web application that uh, should have been iOS. Um, and they were looking at delivering communications via email, SMS, and push notifications. So, you know, this is kind of where we, we uh, found our first obstacle. Um, the only real plugin for mobile push notifications today is OneSignal. Um, it's not the best documented plugin out there, uh, although it does come native with Mortic today. <clears throat> and it is only for, uh, uh, it's, it's not running for Firebase. So using one signal wasn't really an option for us. Um, the client that we're working with did have a very, very uh, good development team. And together we were actually able to piggyback on the one signal plugin. And there is another plugin that is developed by guys called, I think, Lead Engine. Um, Joey passed them on to us. That makes a, a Firebase plugin. At the time when we took this plugin on, I think they had just developed it and really wasn't working up to scratch. I saw a post uh, on the forum about two weeks ago that they've released a new version of this. So that might be very, very interesting to, uh, <clears throat> to everybody else out there that's looking for a Firebase integration. Um, so with their development team, we were actually able to um, hack the OneSignal plugin and pass information to Firebase and actually be able to send out push notifications uh, via the normal channels um, <clears throat> or the normal campaign inside inside Mortic. Um, the the next obstacle was actually the uh, the client has their own uh, SMS gateway, which actually connects up to to a number of different SMS providers. So over here, we actually had to go and write our own plugin to this gateway. And you know, once again, because everything is open source and it's very very easy to actually have a look at the <clears throat> at the code out there. So we, instead of actually writing a new 
a new plugin altogether. We just went and tweaked the Twilio plugin and got the SMS working and <clears throat> actually got the, you know, the basic function of the system running. So now we had email, we had SMS and we had push notification. Um, <clears throat> our, our next task was actually getting the API integration. Maltix REST API is excellent. It's very, very well documented. It's easy to use and getting it installed on any website is seamless. There are certain issues that we have faced in the past. We didn't face them with this particular client. Um, and there have been issues of anonymous users not converting into known users in the past. Um, Joey has his magic pixel trick around that. Um, and there are actually, we've just encountered other issues with, uh, with Cloudflare that we'll be writing some documentation on in the near future once we actually solve that problem. But for this, for this particular client, it was a simple put in the tracking script on his site and within minutes, the database just started filling up with all the anonymous contacts coming in. I mean, they have um, a few hundred users probably every few minutes. Uh, their maximum number of orders per minute is something like 32 orders a minute. So you can understand that it's a very, very, very high volume. It was a lot of strain on the server and um, actually a lot of strain on, on Mautic itself. And kind of that's where we move into, you know, the, the bad and the ugly of, <clears throat> of what's happening. Um, so the bad, Mautic for, and, and once again, I'm not a coder, I'm not a, a DevOps person. Um, so it's just kind of my, my view and my um, experience running Mautic. Um, the, from what I understand, the, the Mautic is based on firing events using cron jobs. These cron jobs run one after the other by default. And this, is, and this started causing big issues with updating and triggering both campaigns and, and segments. So for example, we had segments that had a few hundred thousand users in them. And if you were running you know, Mautic update, Mautic segments update, all the segments, it would spend all its time on this specific, uh, the specific segment and actually wouldn't get to the other segments. Um, and the same, the same thing we actually found with, uh, with campaigns as well. When you're updating a campaign or triggering a campaign, if you're not actually specifying with the minus I flag, then it basically goes uh, one after the other and not necessarily going to get to the end and <clears throat> The, the segments either didn't get updated or the campaigns didn't get updated correctly and didn't get triggered. So we had a lot of learning to do over there. Um, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. One second. And um, I'm sorry, my daughter's just arrived home. Um, so, so basically we had we had to kind of overcome this issue of how are we going to actually update segments correctly and how are we going to run campaigns correctly. Um, the, the other big issue that we ran into is something that uh, a lot of people that are running uh, high volume uh, users is that the database can blow up very, very quickly. Uh, we found this is basically due to audit logs, uh, email stats and the page hits table. <clears throat> so basically how did we overcome you know these obstacles that we that we faced at the beginning um we started investigating cron jobs i did a lot of research on the forum i spoke with uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the guys out there <clears throat> uh, specifically joey um and ruth was a was a great help <clears throat> and um what we started doing was we actually started writing up single cron jobs for each for for each segment out there and the way that we did this was we said okay which are the segments that need to be updated only once a day so we had a cron job like this for example one basically this is running at one minute past one in the morning every single day and it's only updating the segment number two whereas segment number 13 for example needs to be uh, updated every minute so in our actual cron tab, we would have a cron tab with over, I don't know, probably 50 lines on different segments. 
Now, this is not the optimal way to do this. Um, and, and, you know, I, I keep on bringing up Joey, but he's been a great help. And Joey actually wrote out a script that if you define your naming scheme in, more, in, the, in the segment correctly, his script will then go and update it according to the naming script, the naming scheme that you put in over there. So it's definitely something to look at. Uh, it was a great resource for us. We actually didn't use it with this client itself, but we went and we created these um, cron jobs manually ourselves. The campaign issues was probably our, our biggest issue that we had over here. Um, every single week, these people are doing new campaigns. They have Valentine's Day campaign. They have Pizza Day campaign. They have all these different campaigns that are not simple campaigns. They are um, using all three forms of communication. So they're using SMS. They're using push notifications. They're using emails. There's a lot of conditions inside the campaign as well. Um, so the campaigns are, are, are quite intricate. And the main issue that we saw over there was that, you know, if I was, once again, if I was running just one uh, console job that said Maltic campaigns, update Maltic campaigns, trigger, not everything would work correctly. And what we did was we started playing around with, okay, what happens if I run a specific campaign the same way that I would run a segment. So for example, I would use minus I and put the, the campaign ID in over there. And then could I do that in parallel with other, camp with other campaigns and would that work? And that logic actually worked very, very well for us. The issue that we, that we came into over there was every single week, they were writing new campaigns and the client doesn't necessarily want you want to be dependent on you to actually go and say, okay, you know, I've written a new campaign, please go make sure that it works. So, you know, we would have to go in, have a look at the campaign, try and understand which are the hours that specific things are being triggered and write out specific jobs for those specific hours. Um, and what we did over there is we started working on a, uh, on a campaign cron job builder script. Um, and it's a work in process. Um, it's something that I do hope to release eventually. Currently what the, uh, what the script does is it looks inside the campaigns table and it has a look at all the events and it takes out each event and it understands what hour each event is meant to be run at and actually goes and does an echo or creates a line of code that we then go and push into the cron job, into the cron tab itself. So by doing this, we were actually able to run simultaneous campaigns that were firing off at the same time. And because the server was strong enough, it was actually able to, to handle all of, the, uh, all of the stress on it. Um, in saying that, the server did slow down immensely. And what our initial installation was basically a server and database on the same server, which is pretty common for Mortic today. Um, however, in enterprise, it's just not going to really work for you. So what we did was we looked at moving to an RDS and we managed to get the RDS up and running. Um, however, because of the stress on the, on the actual database and um, the number of, of records being written and read per second, the RDS actually didn't really work very, very well for us. So what we did was we just set up a separate server. Um, we scaled down the app. So, so we, we basically used an application server for the Mortic files itself and for the cron jobs. And we used a separate server. And that, that application server, we actually scaled down. It didn't need as much resources. And we set up a separate server, which was a very, very, very strong server for the database itself. Uh, once we did that, we saw a huge increase in page load time. And actually, I mean, it, you know, as I think Ruth said it in, in her, one of her earlier uh, talks today, is that, you know, when you're supporting such huge size databases, everything starts coming to a grinding halt inside Mortic. It's very, very difficult to load a page. It's difficult to load a contact card to get into the campaigns or look at segments. And, you know, luckily we've seen, especially in 4.31, that segments get updated a lot quicker now. Um, <clears throat> And actually moving to a separate server gave a, uh, I mean, the, the whole team over there felt the difference immediately. 
So pages load a lot, lot quicker today. Um, it's much easier to clone campaigns. It's much easier to actually go into segments and to basically do, to do anything that you want to do that you should be able to do in an automated marketing system itself. Um, some, of the, some of the ugly stuff, um, it's, you know, it's legacy stuff that is out there that, you know, was built, uh, I guess, a long time ago. And, you know, the, the actual code and the idea behind Mortic is amazing. However, you know, things have evolved over the past years. And you know, as Ruth mentioned, we don't, uh, we don't really have that many resources in terms of developers and testers to actually go out and, you know, fix up these, these small things, which, you know, we kind of, we kind of see as ugly things. Um, one of them, and that I've seen being mentioned quite a bit on the forum itself, is the campaign stats and the campaign overview. It's not really uh, intuitive as to what is going on inside the campaign, how many people are at a specific point inside the campaign, how many people have received a specific mailer or haven't received a specific mailer. You kind of have a success and a failure percentage over there. Um, but it wasn't really giving our clients or ourselves enough information to actually report to them and for them to report to their, their bosses and say, okay, listen, this is what the campaign is doing. This is how many people are inside the campaign. This is the success of the campaign, et cetera, et cetera. So what we did was we found an amazing piece of, uh, uh, open source software as well called Metabase, Metabase BI. Um, and we started playing with Metabase BI. And using Metabase, we were able to actually visualize the campaigns in uh, an amazing, amazing way. Um, we were able to see exactly how many SMSs were going out, what time the SMSs were going out, um, all the push notifications. So it gave us a, a real advantage and provided great added value to the customer and provided the customer that added value to actually generate a proper BI that they could show to the marketing director or to the CEO of exactly what's kind of going on over there. Um, on a side note, we also, we, one of the things that we, we kind of found a little bit limiting inside Mortic itself was the dashboard. Um, so we kind of found it uh, a bit more challenging to show the KPIs that the actual customer wants to see and not really what a technical marketing person wants to see. And what we did was we used Metabase BI in order to create this dashboard. Um, I did write a post and a, a full explanation on how to actually integrate Metabase BI into your dashboard itself. That's a very, very simple hack. You just need to change a few lines of code. Like I said, I'm not a coder, but if you follow my instructions, you, you can very, very easily get your, uh, your Metabase uh, dashboard up and running um, and maybe I will I will see if I can show that I'll show an example of that uh, a little bit later um, and the 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 other thing that was you know a little bit ugly about about Mortic is the actual cleanup of the database itself so Mortic has the uh, database um, uh, cleanup um, uh, uh, console command that runs and this will actually let you go and say, okay, you know, delete the audit logs after X amount of time. Um, over here with this, specific, with this specific client, we actually need to keep audit logs for quite a while. Um, as you can imagine, you know, in such a high volume industry with people getting a lot of pushes and SMSs and emails, uh, they do get the occasional complaint saying, hey, you're spamming me, you're spamming me or I'm suing you. And, you know, as ugly as the audit log table is by getting very, very big, it has definitely saved the client in terms of being able to see exactly what a specific user has done, when he signed up, did he go to the unsubscribe page, did he unsubscribe or not? Um, so it's kind of got the, the good and the bad to it as well. Um, the other things that, I mean, our, the, their database is over 100, I think 150 gigs at the moment. And I think a lot of this is attributed to the to the actual stats tables. So over here, I've just written the mail stats, but I, I have not looked personally at the mobile or the, the push notification stats and the SMS stats, but I'm assuming that 
Um, they're also pretty big, but not as big as mail stats. As mail stats is actually taking a lot more information on the clicks and on the number of opens and each time somebody opens it as well. And the third one is the page hits. Um, now, there are tutorials out there on the web today on how to go and clean up your mail stats and your page hits uh, via MySQL. Um, I'm pretty comprehensive inside MySQL myself, but I have to say that on such a big database, what I did was I went and I created a staging environment and I tried to run these scripts <clears throat> and I totally killed the database. So it's definitely something to, uh, to go into cautiously. Um, and I would recommend anybody doing any kind of database uh, cleanup to make backups of your database first. That's a very, very simple command. Got MySQL dump, gzip, put it into a, into a file and, uh, and you're good to go. Generally, what I like to do is when I do any, anything on Mautic itself on the back end or inside the command line, I generally uh, run my backup scripts, uh, something that I'll post as well. And basically what this does is it will go and it will make a tar of all the Mautic files. It will make a backup of the database itself. I can then go and I can run whatever I want. I can break whatever I want. And within a few minutes or an hour, depending on how big the database is, I can get everything up and running again. Mm. So at, at this stage, I mean, I don't know if anybody's got any questions. I don't exactly know how the, uh, the conference works over there. But uh, if anybody does have questions, you're welcome to you know, throw them into the chat. Um, if not, we, I can basically you know, just summarize, summarize this for us. Um, and you know, while I summarize, if anybody has anything, I see that, uh, uh, there we go. Um, <laughs> All right, so, thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much, Michael and Jordan. That was a very brief one and um, well explanatory. Hope you can hear me clearly. Yes, 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 yes. All right, great, great, great. All right, good. So um, a couple of questions, a couple of questions. So uh, I'm going to start by asking, how long did it take you to map out the customer requirements? <clears throat> so I think it, it probably took us about, to map out the customer requirements, probably took us around a month to two months to actually to actually map it out correctly and and one of the things you know in terms of now moving away from the technical and more into the actual marketing strategy is that these guys were using a different system at the time and they had absolutely no naming convention over there so they had specific campaigns for example an, an app welcome campaign or a um, app registered never purchased campaign um, directly after purchase campaign, they had all these different campaigns running, but they actually had no naming convention. And coming up with the strategy around the the naming convention itself was probably took more time to actually think about and implement than anything else. Um, okay. I see. Right. I, I see over here that we've got a question of how how MySQL is performing with such data. So, you know, as, as I said, you know, it's, we, we have, I think on the, on the database, on the database server today, we have 64 gigs, we have eight CPUs and, you know, in peak, in peak times, we probably uh, are using, I would say roughly between 60 to 60 to 90% of all resources. Um, the database is handling very, very well besides the fact that, uh, it gets very, very big. Um, it writes a lot of logs. MySQL writes an enormous amount of logs. And this is actually something that uh, th that can be a little bit, uh, can give you a heart attack. You know, all of a sudden you can wake up in the morning and you can log in and all of a sudden you've got no connection. And the client is like, oh, you know, what's going on? What's going on? And I know straight away that the disk is out of space. And I go in and I have a look at var log MySQL and I'll see 35 gigs of logs written over there no, and, you know, just remove that remove and it. you're good to go. Um, actually, what we did was we, we, we set up a cron tab to, to remove the MySQL logs once a week, once this happened more than once. All right. So there's a question from Robin. 
Robin is asking, how do you handle the demands of a client demanding fixes for your, an issue and not having an answer and having to rely on the community for solution, which can take days or week? <laughs> I think I have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's an interesting so, one. So, 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 you know, Rob, this is, this is a great question and you kind of need to know how to mitigate your clients correctly. Um, we actually ran into this, into this issue recently where we found that, um, I don't know who is using dynamic content in emails, but we've used it extensively in the past. And all of a sudden with Mautic 4, we saw that it's not working anymore. Uh, I put a post on the, uh, on the forum, Ruth jumped onto it straight away. She right. checked it, she saw it's not working. And there is an issue now on uh, GitHub that every single day I'm looking at, and my client actually texted me today. He's like, listen, what's like, happening with dynamic content? content? And I said, don't worry, the developers are working on it. It's not an easy fix. <laughs> so, you know, and, uh, but I, I, I have enough faith in, in the community, and I know that this is an integral part, actually, of, of Mortic itself that it will be released in the next uh, in the next version and if it isn't released and there is a patch out there then um, you know it's very easy to go ahead and uh, and install the patch I think Rob actually showed me how to install patches uh, all right so um, Mike I'm also see um, thank you so much for your contribution to the community also we try as much as possible to also share where you order others are also needing help also okay so i have one other question here talking about just building on the first question i asked you earlier from the point that you map out the customer requirement how long did it take to get the infrastructure set up um so you know i'll answer that that point i'll answer that in in two in two parts to get the hardware infrastructure set up and the technical thing set up, um, you know, to get Mortic up and, and running is is a matter of uh, of hours. I mean, today we've actually automated the process. You know, we can get an instance up and running within within a matter of minutes. However, on such a big client with so many requirements, it obviously takes a lot a lot more time. And there was a learning curve on the client side in order to be able to integrate the SMS gateway. And then to actually go and do the development and the, and the hacking around one signal in Firebase. So this in itself probably took two months to do. Um, and then we kind of got to the stage where we actually had a functioning system. Um, we had a functioning system. It took us another probably three or four months to actually get the marketing strategy put inside Mortic itself all the campaigns set up correctly, all the emailers, all the, the, the assets. And this is just for their, for, for their, you know, their customer journey campaigns, not even for their promotional campaigns. So they have around nine customer journey campaigns today. And this in itself took us, a, a, I would say another three months to actually get into place and to explain to the client the importance of a proper naming convention. So, you know, that you can actually go into, they use adjust as their, as their tracking system. So you can actually go into adjust and you can see exactly which campaigns are running and how those campaigns are running and what's the revenue generated per campaign uh, down to the granular level of not just the campaign, but either the specific email or the spe specific SMS or the specific um, uh, push notification out there. Um, so, yeah, I think i hope that answers the question yeah that's it all right thank you so much michael okay all right so one yeah. more question building on that is i'm um, following the getting the infrastructure live how long did it take to get the campaign live after you've been able to figure out the infrastructure then the campaign so, it's kind of an so ongoing like said, thing uh, yeah. go for it yeah no, 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 you go for it, Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say, it's kind of an ongoing thing. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, you set up the initial infrastructure, you set up the initial set of campaigns that meets their KPIs, or at least uh, reaches the benchmarks that they've been running at on whatever software or whatever um, uh, combination of softwares up until that point. 
Uh, one thing that's nice about uh, Mordic is that everything sits in one place. So you've got all of your landing pages, all of your forms, all of your um, nurturing, and then emails, SMSs, uh, push notifications, pop-ups, et cetera, all in one place. Um, so once you've actually mapped out all of those campaigns, the, the implementation and the material production and the content, et cetera, et cetera, takes some time to, uh, to get done. Um, and as Mike said, it took about uh, three months to, to get that to completion. Um, but then the real work starts, right? Because then you've got to start going in and not only optimizing on the tech stack, but also going into the actual campaigns and looking at where you can optimize in terms of whatever the, the pain point is, um, whether it is the top level conversion or it's going into um, their, their retention. Um, some of the biggest rate, uh, increases that we saw in terms of revenue came from churn uh, um, uh, segments. And, you know, that's where you're looking at 30, 60, 90 days since less purchase or less activity. Um, but we were able to break it down into those kind of methodological steps and then go in and, uh, I suppose, attack or deal with each one uh, as they came up. And then it's an ongoing thing, as I say, um, continuing to optimize, continuing to measure, seeing campaigns um, that are working, seeing campaigns um, that aren't and seeing campaigns that also are uh, going into an infinite loop, um, which is another thing that, uh, that gets uh, interesting where you're dealing with such a high volume client. Um, yeah, pretty much uh, I think that deals with campaigns uh, in terms of time going live. Mark's brought up the, the, the dashboard implementation that we've, uh, that we've kind of got to as well. Uh, in terms of an easy way for us to see the, the, um, the system from a top level, um obviously this is a dashboard and quite a simple dashboard these go very very deep in terms of what you're able to do once you've got a good um bi on the front of it um and i think that's kind of the power that everybody's looking for here is is the ability to initiate all different kinds of campaigns on all different channels okay so we're dealing with mobile web uh we actually have a client today that's dealing with tv as well um, and, uh, you know, we're not at the point of kind of native SDKs yet, um, but that's the point that we, that we would like to be getting to, let's say in ho hopefully Mardic 5, <laughs> let's see. Um, but, uh, yeah, hope that answers that question. All right. Great. Great. Thank you so much for that. Okay. So the, 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 um, um, the meta base that you shared is similar to what you just displayed now, right? The one you shared on the community forum. Exactly. It yes. actually goes into every one of the tables that are sitting in the database, and you can combine different tables um, based on uh, the, let's say, the, um, the different joins that are relevant. Um, so it's really nice digging into email stats, push stats. So we've got a really high volume client. I mean, you know, some mornings we wake up and, and are sending out 500,000 push notifications or SMSs or emails and combinations thereof, okay? And those are tied into also multiple reporting systems. So where you've got your initial touch point as email or SMS, you wanna see how that's translating into the mobile activity. And then the pages that are browsed on the mobile and that information are then coming back into the campaign and feeding out into different conditions and decisions. Um, so we're pretty hungry, I think, in terms of our appetite for what these campaigns can do. So a lot of the time, yeah, you know, Mike is definitely the more techie of us. And as he said, <laughs> he's not even that so techie. So the demands in terms of what we place on each other in terms of building out really comprehensive campaigns, dealing with um, a lot of con conditions and decisions and um, uh, and then actions resulting from that, um, especially where you've got big, big, big legacy databases, um, becomes a, a challenging, but also fun at the end of the day. Um, and uh, I, I think that's why it's cool to share this kind of thing. Um, it's also kind of like an honest and transparent kind of, you know, this is what we expected. This is what we've got. And then this is kind of how we've had to deal with um, uh, maneuvering around it. Um, yeah. Just to just to give you like one, one of the, you know, I know this is a Morty conference, but one of the nice things about uh, about Metabase is that you can actually integrate into one dashboard um, data from many different data sources. So, for example, uh, in this client over here, we have, you know, the, the overview of the data, and then we're actually able to bring in 
Google Analytics as well. So there really is um, a lot of information that you can bring in from Google or from any kind of database whatsoever. And this really has provided our clients a, uh, um, a huge amount of, uh, of added value. That's really, really cool. This really cool. All right. Thank you so much to uh, Michael and Jordan. And um, it's really been an, um, an educating session. And um, also, I can see more power about MetaBase. So I think it's something I will also go and learn more myself and see I can use it for my projects too. All right. So um, if you need any help, hit us up. Uh, oh, okay. All right. All right. Great. Great. So, Michael, I, I wouldn't know. Maybe that would be great to talk about. Maybe I sent you a, mail, a message in, um, on, on, on the forum some few days ago. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe you got the message. Ah, I actually, I, I think uh, uh, an inbox message. Yes. Yes. You inbox. send me. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll reply to that shortly. Huh? Oh, did you reply? Because I checked just today, I didn't get no, it. I didn't I didn't, I didn't, I have, I, I, I didn't reply. I, 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 I didn't reply. It's been a public holiday over here over the weekend, and uh, we've had a bit of a short week, so I will get to that. Though. Oh, so. no. no, no problem. I think maybe it will be nice, maybe if you can discuss this at the Multic Meetup Lagos, that would be nice, about MetaBase sure. and, um, and um, Multic. Sure. sure, I think All that, right, um, you know, an an another, another, um, priceless piece of software that we use that has been spoken about on the forum as well is a piece of software called N8N, which um, helps yeah. with uh, different integrations. And, and that has, yeah. I mean, they, they recently changed their license. So it's, it's become um, a little bit more cumbersome because you have to set up a separate server for each client that's using it, but it's a priceless piece of software as well. Oh, great, 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 great. I think N8N is, N8N is also Node Nation, actually. It's also a piece of software that is very helpful. All right. I, I think um, I, I will link up with you more about this and see how we can take it further after this conference. Okay. So there seems to not be any other questions. All right. So at the end of um, at this junction, I would like to thank both Jordan and Michael for their time and for presenting this um, valuable information, sharing this with other people. I would love to see you more in the forum, contributing and helping people answer questions. All right. So in case you would like to still engage maybe one-on-one -on -one with Jordan and Michael, um, I believe they will be joining the lounge. So just join the table three on the lounge. That is for room three, rather, on the lounge. And then you can be able to interact more with oh. Michael and Jordan. Great. So Michael, thanks, thanks very much. Everybody. Thanks for hosting us, uh, Toby. And uh, thanks, everyone, for dropping by. Really nice to see uh, a few people dropping in. Uh, yeah. Hope you found some value from it. And uh, yeah, any questions that you have, please uh, feel free to shout. It will also be nice to hear what kind of challenges you guys have come into and where we can uh, uh, where we can combine and, uh, and join forces, at least uh, overcoming whatever it comes, it comes up next, let's say. <laughs> All right, perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay, let's keep your head for the next section. So we have an AK who will be talking to us about the multi-community, how you can contribute. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye for now. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao.